Hello everybody, I'm Eternal Flame here, and today we are here to talk about Yuji's Awakening and what that can potentially mean for the future of JJK. After all, Yuji has just awakened his full potential after landing the biggest Black Flash we have seen up to this point in the series. One so massive it was able to make Sakuna look tiny, like that's how big it actually was. So of course I do think, and a lot of people think, that something is going to come as a result of this, and that there could be a bunch of potential power-ups that could come from Yuji landing this Black Flash. And today I want to go over each of the ideas that I could potentially have and that I've been seeing floating around on the internet community about what could potentially happen from Yuji using this Black Flash and awakening his potential. Now I will be going in these ideas from order of what I think is most likely to happen all the way to what I think is least likely to happen just to add in a little bit more variety and spice to this and it should be noted there is likely the potential that all these could also happen as well. So before we get into this, be sure to like and subscribe like JJK content like this. There's a lot more on the channel, and I know you'll like it. We are going to expand into other animes soon too, but without the further ado, let's get into this. Now up first, I am going to go over the guaranteed buffs, then I'm going to go over to the hypothetical buffs of what Yuji's full awakening could mean. Number one, Yuji's curse technique as well as his curse energy manipulation and finally control over his soul punches are going to be massively amped as a result of Yuji now landing this black flash. Now the curse technique as well as his curse energy efficiency is likely not a surprise, however, However, I'm going to explain the soul one now because the reason why Yuji's soul fist is going to be amplified is because we see back in the Mahito fight that through being able to use the Black Flash, you're actually able to gain a greater understanding of your soul and amplify it in the process. After all, Mahito needed to use two Black Flashes in order to obtain his true form in his battle against Yuji. However, now that Yuji's landed one Black Flash, his soul punches are going to be even more efficient and even better at dulling Sakuna's curse energy in comparison to before. Which, to remind you guys, Yuji's soul punches before is good enough down to the point where they're basically able to nullify the buff that Sakuna gets from a Black Flash. However, now we're going to be even more refined and even better, on top of Yuji's blood manipulation getting better as well, to add even more pressure onto Sakuna. It could also be possible that Yuji is now able to apply his soul attacks to his blood manipulation as well, which would make it even worse, so now Sakuna doesn't have to just worry about blocking his soul hits from Yuji directly, but now he also has to worry about blocking his blood manipulation. Speaking of blood manipulation, Yuji might be able to gain an even greater grasp on blood manipulation. For example, we have learned in the most recent chapter that Yuji is not able to use Convergence on his own. While he has learned Supernova and how to use Supernova, he is not able to use Convergence, which explains why he wasn't able to use moves like Piercing Blood on his own. Which he needed Choso's blood in order to actually utilize Piercing Blood on his own and actually fire it out at Sakuna. And that's going to be important later on as Yuji is able to manipulate Choso's blood, so keep that idea in the back of your head for now. Now. However, it could be possible that that was the reason why Yuji wasn't using other techniques that you would think would be very, very useful for this battle, specifically techniques like Flowing Red Scale Stack. When Yuji's only way to actually reach Sakuna and be able to damage his soul is requiring physicals, then why isn't he using the move specifically made to amplify the user's physicals and amplify all of their stats, especially speed, which is what is needed the most against someone like Sakuna? Well, it could be very, very possible that Yuji just was not able to use something like Flowing Red Skill Stack right now. However, with the potential amp that had come from a Black Flash, it is very, very likely that Yuji is now capable of using that move, as well as the other blood manipulation moves we have seen from both Choso and Kamo that he hasn't been able to use up to this point because he wasn't able to use them, but now that his potential has been fully unlocked, he should be able to use these blood manipulation moves that he wasn't using beforehand, which is going to be very, very important for being able to free Megami, especially after this hit has been landed. So on top of whatever Curse Energy Amp and Curse Energy Control Amp Yuji is about to get through landing that Black Flash, he's also potentially about to be able to use Flowing Red Scale Stack, which is going to increase the amp in terms of hand-to-hand -hand even further. Furthermore, something even more impressive about Flowing Red Scale Stack, and this might actually be very useful in the future, we know you can use Flowing Red Scale Stack alongside other techniques, mainly because of the fact that Shoso does so in his battle against Yuji. While he is battling Yuji in hand-to-hand, -hand, he's also using several blood manipulation applications, which will allow him to add even more pressure in the battle. Speaking of his brothers, it could be possible that Yuji is able to awaken his brother's curse techniques in specific and their applications in order for him to utilize against Sukuna. Now, it should be noted, Yuji does have blood manipulation thanks to his brothers, and he has their CT. He doesn't actually have a CT of himself. However, we don't know if each of his brothers have their own blood manipulation specific applications, and we don't even know if they are currently awake or not. We don't actually know the conscious levels of the brothers, we just know they are currently living on with inside of Yuji. However, now that Yuji has landed a black Flash, it might be possible that Yuji has actually awakened his brothers a bit more for him to have even more help against Sakuna and have even more abilities that he might end up using. Not just being Yuji v Sakuna, but Yuji and six other people now v Sakuna in the body that is Yuji Itadori. 
Now, I will say this idea does come from one of you guys in the comment sections. I currently, or at least recording me, doesn't actually know what the comment is called. However, I do know I got it from one of you guys, so editing me will put that comment up on screen for you all to look at. Now, what could be the possible abilities that Yuji might end up awakening from this evolved level of blood manipulation now that he has access to all of his brothers and their techniques? Well, there are a bunch of videos speculating about what those potential abilities could be, so I'm going to link one from another person that I really like from Kyo Breeze, mainly because I don't want to actually spend too much time talking about what those potential abilities can be. Be, since I don't really have any idea of what could be added to that entire discussion based on what could be the Broad Brothers techniques. So we are going to move on to the next section of this of something that Yuji might actually end up potentially awakening, which is maybe his own type of soul armor or soul form in a very similar way to how Mahito did, mainly because of the entire I'm you line between Mahito and Yuji and the relation that they are one and the same. So it might end up awakening some full type of soul form for Yuji or Yuji might start awakening them and being on the process of awakening one in order to utilize the full strength of Yuji's soul against someone like Sukuna. It would also be an amazing callback back to the Mahito vs. Yuji fight, where Yuji ends up fully completing the entire I'm You section of that and now fully on taking on a soul form in order to emulate that of Mahito to get a physical amp enough necessary in order to battle a monster like Sukuna. However, those are the normal theories or the theories that I'm relatively confident and relatively certain that are going to happen. Now we're going to get into the insane theories, the ones you guys actually had come for, and I have a total of three of them that are going to be relatively insane for what they're going to be. Number one, Yuji has finally awoken Sukuna's curse technique. As everyone had noticed, and I kind of forgot to point out in my chapter review, so that's my B, Yuji had been able to awaken eyes that look very similar to Sukuna with the rings inside of them, something that only Sakuna has been shown to have after Yuji had landed the Black Flash. This is not the first time we've ever seen Yuji actually have these eyes, because Yuji also had those eyes at certain points in chapter 215 and 214 when Yuji was fully locked in. The first person to ever point this out was another YouTuber named Curse Fowler, be sure to check him out. And with Gojo making it very clear early on in the series that Yuji would eventually end up awakening Sakuna's own curse and again his body, as well as Yuji now being a cursed object soaked in Sakuna's cursed energy, and there being quite a lot of resemblance between Sakuna and Yuji, it might be possible that Yuji has now fully awakened Sakuna's curse sneak is actually going to utilize it in battle. Furthermore, this also makes sense when you remember that Yuji was created to coexist alongside Sukuna by Kenjaku, so it might be possible that Kenjaku had intended for Yuji to basically be a technique sponge that was able to take Sukuna's technique and use it as his own, which is something he might end up utilizing against Sukuna, which could lead to him potentially using something like the Fire Arrow or Cleave and Dismantle in the next chapter against Sukuna to get Sukuna's own curse technique versus Sukuna. This could also be Yei's own way of having Sukuna's curse technique finally be revealed to us, because rather than having Sakuna be the one who actually reveals it to us, this could be actually Yuji who reveals it to us all along because he will be able to utilize Sakuna's curse technique and force Sakuna to have to go all out because he's effectively fighting himself that also has access to blood manipulation as well as the ability to affect his soul. Even though it will be a slightly weaker version, Sakuna is still going to be nerfed as well thanks to the effects of Yuji's Black Flash already amplifying his nerfed punches that are going to keep nerfing Sakuna. This could also result in a power-up in Yuji being able to now fully utilize the cursed energy that is surrounding him from Sakuna and being able to incorporate those into his attacks, basically making him even stronger and even more powerful for this battle against what's going to already be a nerf Sakuna, which is going to be an absolute nightmare for Sakuna, but it would fully realize Yuji's potential just like it's being said here. And it could force Sakuna to go all out, something that Urame said that Sakuna has not been doing throughout these battles. However, while I see this being possible, I don't see this being all too likely. However, now we're going to move on to the next theory about what Yuji's Awakening is going to lead into and what the full potential is going to be of Yuji's Awakening, which is going to be able to fully explain what Sakuna meant when he said so long ago in chapter 214, oh right, that brat is from back then. I think Yuji is about to get a massive amp in terms of physicals and maybe even the potential of him awakening his own original curse technique, I have no idea about that one, but I do think that Yuji is about to get a massive amp in his physicals. This is mainly because of the fact that Kenjaku had a lot of expectations for Yuji up to this point, as well as Sukuna remembering who Yuji was because of the strength that Yuji had displayed and the sudden massive boost in power that Yuji had displayed. However, I don't think in 214 that Yuji was able to unlock all of it, but now I do think that Yuji is able to utilize all of that physical strength that he had once in the past of whoever he used to be. Whoever this strength reminds Sukuna of because Sukuna does remember this strength and remembers it quite well and also finds it quite creepy because Yuji was built from that person when he specifically says, oh right, Kenjaku does the creepiest of things. 
he is reminded of that strength, which might lead into a massive physical power up for Yuji, as well as the potential of him awakening whatever his original curse technique was. Now, in my opinion, I don't actually think Yuji has an original curse technique anymore, mainly because I think it was sacrificed in order to allow him to have heavenly restriction like powers, or at least some degree of heavenly restriction like powers, which I've talked about in this theory up here. However, it is fully possible that Yuji could actually end up awakening this curse technique, and I was wrong about that portion, but I do want to be mentioned nonetheless. But unlike all of the other powers which just answer how Yuji is going to end up getting stronger, this could also answer a few other things that are going to be extremely important for the future. For example, it is very clear that Yuji and Sukuna have some link about their past. Whether it's because of the fact that Sukuna had known Yuji from the Heian era, or that Sukuna was aware of the experiment that was Yuji Itadori, something about Yuji Itadori is enough to give Sukuna that reaction of that Kenjaku sure is twisted. Which could lead into a little flashback of the Heian era from Sukuna, the Heian era flashback that all of us have been wondering about, as well as the reason why Kenjaku had actually made Yuji to begin with. So while the power-up that Yuji might get from this is a lot harder to predict, mainly because it's Yuji's original power, unlike everything else which has some type of basis on things that have been established in the series, this gave us some answers to things that we have been wanting the answers to for a long time. Such as why Sukuna knows Yuji, why Kenjaku has such high expectations for Yuji, what was the original purpose of even creating Yuji to begin with? A backstory from Sukuna, Yuji being able to awaken this full potential and having some link between himself and Sukuna, as well as showing off the reason why Kenjaku made him, could end up showing us quite a lot of necessary information that we have been wanting to see for the longest time. This could even be the reason why Gege have been waiting so long to actually give us that Sukuna Heian era flashback in order to actually wait for Yuji to awaken his full potential and actually remind him of those times. After all, there's some things about Sakuna's past that we still don't know about. For example, how was Sakuna even able to become the strongest? After all, we do know that it was something that Sakuna had done to himself through Kashimo in his own dialogue, so Yuji could potentially be the answer on how Sakuna was able to become the strongest. But what I think is even more important is the fact that Urame and Gojo both note that Sakuna had not gone all out yet. But the more important thing is, Urame has implied that they know what a Sakuna going all out looks like. This could mean that someone had forced Sukuna to go all out in the Heian era, and that might be who Yuji was originally built from. So this moment could be the way that he's going to reveal all of this. This moment could be the way that Gege is going to reveal everything and every answer we have about Sukuna and answer it in this moment through this black flash and Yuji finally fully awakening his potential just through those eyes alone as well as whatever Yuji's about to display against Sukuna as well as the importance for why Kenjaku had even made Yuji to begin with, and what his true reason for existing even is. It might even be possible that Yuji might actually end up awakening a domain expansion now that he fully has an idea of who he is, and who he is supposed to be, and his own history, but I'm not as sure about that one, as now we're going again to the final idea, going back to blood manipulation, and a crazy application that is completely based around the idea that Yuji is able to manipulate his own brother's blood. What if Yuji literally simulates the same type of awakening Gojo had, where he was able to awaken the reversal of his own curse technique, where Yuji ends up awakening the reversal of whatever blood manipulation is, and through awakening the reversal, he ends up being able to manipulate not just the blood in his own body, but the blood in other people's bodies too. Now this is admittedly a bit more on the crazy end, and this is admittedly the least likely thing that I see being possible for what could result of Yuji's awakening, but it is still something that I wanted to add in there nonetheless, mainly because I don't think I'd ever get a chance to actually talk about the possibility of Yuji being able to manipulate the blood inside of other people's bodies, but it would be an insane power-up nonetheless. It could also be done like it has some limitations on it or some requirements, for example, Yuji needs to get their own blood into their system before he's actually able to manipulate their own blood, which would make it significantly harder to manipulate, but it would also be able to help in explaining why the Kamo family is included among the big three families, because a lot of people have questions about why blood manipulation is actually included among those powerhouses. So if it does have the ability to manipulate the blood in other people and it requires an awakening like this to show off, then it would be absolutely insane. But I know some people more probably want this power up for Choso than Yuji, mainly because a lot of people want Choso to be the pinnacle of blood manipulation rather than Yuji, but it is something that could still be possible nonetheless to happen in the future, as well as maybe Yuji getting a domain expansion. I don't know really if Yuji can get a domain expansion or not, but it could very well be possible that Yuji ends up awakening a domain expansion. However, that's about everything that I can think of about what Yuji could potentially get from this awakening, so I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below about what Yuji could end up getting from this awakening. Is it any of the things that I said in this video? Is it something else you might believe? Comment it down below, because I really want to see what you guys actually think. Anyways, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out. Have a good day.